after me, um, <laughs> after struggling a little bit to catch any dobbin, I've definitely, feeding has definitely brought a few fish into me peg. So what I want to talk through next is what I like to do down the middle, and that's fishing a little bit of sweet corn. So it's not something, in all honesty, that you see very often on, especially on canal uh, type venues, on snake lakes. Corn's a very, very underused bait. And as a little, a bit of a secret sort of thing, on here, this particular venue, it was a real edge that I used to have, feeding corn down the middle, used to really, really outscore other anglers that were feeding maggots and meat and that, because it's something different that fish aren't used to. So firstly, same as, I want to go through quickly the rigs I want to use. Down here, I've got a depth of about five foot down the middle. And because I'm using such a heavy bait like sweet corn, what it does brilliantly is anchors itself on the bottom. So I can actually get away with using a nice light float. So in this case, again, same floats that I use for so many of my uh, different methods that we fish. I want a slim wire stem float. That's perfect for sitting down the middle because for some reason, whatever it is, it's probably because there's no slopes. The middle doesn't seem to tow anywhere near as much. So you can often get away with fishing a lighter float that still maintains stability. But as I was talking about a second ago, the sweet corn also aids in stability because I've got a lovely little anchor on my hook once my uh, sweet corn lands on the bottom, allowing a nice light float to hold in place much more than it would with other baits. So for this rig particularly, I've got my little 4x12s float set at five foot, and I simply have number 10s spread all the way through my rig until the bottom two foot where I have two number 12 shot. What that's gonna allow to happen is my uh, bait to sink nice and slowly, or nice and naturally, it's gonna sink quite quick because it's a big lump of corn, but when it's actually sat in the water, my rig's gonna be a lovely arc. Because down the middle, if there's any wind, the last thing I want is a really tight rig, because with such a heavy bait anchoring on the bottom, if there's a wind blowing, it'll cause my float to actually push underwater. So by having a nice strong, strung out air shot in, and by plumbing up, so I'm right at the bottom of my body. So I've actually got a bit of allowance on the bottom. I'm not really tight, I've got a nice curve in my rig. It allows me to stay direct to my bait and see any bites as soon as they happen. So going back to the rig rise, as I say, a nice strung out rig. The same as my bread rig, I've got an 015 mainline. It's nice and durable. I can catch whatever I want on that. I've actually dropped down the size of elastic. Again, this is mainly due to the fish that I'm going to be catching. Down the middle, in this particular venue, for whatever reason, you tend not to catch too many carp, especially when I've got a load of room whenever I'm coaching, or like today when we're sort of pleasure fishing. But I'm going to catch a lot of F1s, sort of one to two pound. So our three to six elastic, that's really going to let me get them in quickly. But at the same time, it's not going to upset the fish when I hook them meaning the other shoal, other fish in the shoal stay well behaved and I get a bite a lot quicker when I go in. Hook length wise, I've gone a little bit lighter in this rig in that I've dropped to 010 and the same, similar to what Andy was using, I'm on an 18 Guru Pellet hook. Again, a nice light gauge wire hook that's gonna rip through my corn nice and easy, but again, I can land lots of nice fish. It's not gonna make my hook bait look too heavy because um, it's too heavy making the bait sink too quickly with the, the added weight to the hook. 